So I'm Steve Monfort. I'm the director of the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute, and it's my distinct pleasure to welcome all of you today to the grand opening of the Smithsonian Mason School of Conservation. I want to. So we gather here today to celebrate more than just some beautiful uh, academic buildings. Years before the concrete was poured, the foundation was laid for a great partnership between the Smithsonian Institution and George Mason University. The School of Conservation now is a vehicle for harnessing the accumulated intellectual knowledge and the unique networks of these two great institutions to advance the theory and the practice of conservation biology, but also to fuel the hope and the unlimited potential of a new generation of young people and professionals who come here to learn and to share their experiences within an unrivaled community of conservation. But finally, and most importantly, I really want to thank all of our dedicated faculty, our staff and volunteers, the people who teach and provide the practicum experiences for our young people and develop the state-of-the-art courses for professionals and practitioners. Thank you. Thank you most for your inspiration and for your knowledge, which is really the core of what we're trying to accomplish here. Think about the mentors and the networks and the partnerships that have bolstered your own success. Where would you be and how successful would you be without them? So because knowledge sharing, networking, and mentoring up, down, and sideways are so fundamental to our success, our programs go explicitly beyond the traditional didactic approaches to education and include hands-on experience and interactions with diverse knowledgeable stakeholders, and I'll list a few, including scientists, animal care experts, civic and business people, policymakers, philanthropists, government and non-government agency experts, among many others. So we embrace a philosophy of experiential learning in the broad discipline of conservation biology, and we recognize the critical importance of establishing and sustaining robust communities of practice that will support students and trainees long after they compete or complete our programs. This is just a start. This place, you think it's in Front Royal, Virginia, but it's connected to the world. This is a scientific site that's connected to 50 sites like it around the world, where we standard our data around forest management. This, because of digital capabilities, will deliver the education from this institution, not just here, but all over the world. So it's connected to the world, it's connected to the biodiversity of the world. So it's a thrill to be here and to be associated with it and to have been here sort of from the beginning to be associated with it. I, I feel a little bit like a proud papa <laughs> in saying this. You know, they say defeat is an orphan and victory has many fathers. Well, this is a victory <laughs> that deserves many fathers because so many people really contributed to it. So, uh, congratulations to everybody. I'm so excited to think about the generations of students that have come from here. But congratulations to all of you in this facility who have contributed so much to make that a reality. And the potential that's here is just really amazing for me. <laughs> For this occasion, I was asked, why was this a priority project to support? And simply stated, we, John and I, are very interested in conservation and very concerned for the future. We all, the past generations, have made a mess of our environment worldwide. This is not good for our future generations, for our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and we all know that. And with the rampant increase in population, it will only become more desperate. We need to educate more persons in conservation biology and management and to train how to, how to protect what we still have, and how to create a cadre of persons who have the vision and the passion to make this happen. This facility, <laughs> marvelous, I hope will show the world the opportunities that advanced training and education in conservation management 
biology, whatever you, education, whatever you want to call it, can achieve. The vision remains vital, and I'd like to mention the key components. Obviously, this is a project dedicated to conservation biology and to the training of future generations of conservation leaders, and that's the core purpose, very vital and very clear. But this is also, and I think this is worth mentioning as the term biology is tossed around, this is also an interdisciplinary project. Uh, we're interested in training scientists, we're also training pe interested in training people who can communicate, who can, who can impact policy, so the interdisciplinary quality, quality is crucial. It's also, as Steve has mentioned, this is a project devoted to experiential learning and the opportunity to have hands-on experience combined with more theoretical constructs is really distinctive. It's the wave of the future in education, and in this sense, I think we're, we're staking out a leadership position. It's not just to prepare a new generation of, of experts and technicians and scientists in, in, in conservation, but to influence the, the minds and the thinking of people who can make a big difference out there. In fact, we're already co-inspiring -co in how can we start bringing even uh, executives, leaders from, uh, from the big multinational corporations to come here and to understand uh, what, uh, why they should be caring about, about conservation. So <laughs>